Hi, have you ever completed a painting and felt that even though it looks good, it just didn't quite make it there, like it ran a good race but then didn't go across the finish line? So I found that sometimes we just have to add a little extra punch. I've found that the solution usually is in adjusting the values and especially perhaps adding some contrast in the area that we wish to be dominant, but which isn't right now. This little video will show you a trick which will help you to visualize a pattern, put it on the painting without actually ruining the painting. I know we have that complex about wanting this to be a masterpiece, and if it's a good painting, but it's not quite there, we're even more anxious about it. So this is a way to test it out with test out a value idea without actually running the risk of ruining the painting. Here's an autumn scene, which I felt was almost there, but not quite. I looked at it and decided if I put a little value pattern that went across, and contrasted the vertical trees and also added punch right in the in the area dominant area or the area I wanted to be dominant that would perhaps solve it but I didn't want to ruin the painting so here's what I did I stretched some plastic wrap over it and did the pattern with magic marker on the plastic wrap then I could see exactly how it would look what I wanted to do with it. I could design the, the pattern until finally it achieved what I wanted it to achieve. So for this little thing, you'll need some plastic wrap, a matte black magic marker, and of course a painting that you want to resolve. <laughs> but uh, you'll also need some little pieces of tape to just hold the plastic down. I didn't do that. I just laid it on here and and it did move on me which was a little annoying, but I could have solved it with a few pieces of tape. So I hope you enjoy this. Okay, as I'm looking at this now, after a little nice rest, I realize that what I really need is some kind of darker pattern, this dark like this, weaving its way through this foliage here and maybe reaching down into here so it moves like this across there. So that's what I'm going to do. If uh, Sometimes you, you look at something, what if I did What if I did this? But then you think, but what if I did it and it ruined it? Uh, if you want a little bit more surety, here's a good little trick. Take a piece of plastic wrap, the, the uh, cling wrap, put it over the painting, then take a, a dark, um, what do you call them, permanent marker, and look at it and think, okay, I want, I want something moving through here, like, like in through here. I'll just see what would happen if that all connected here through that. And a bit of this down in here, leave some of that green sticking up and some of this. And I do this with my eyes about half closed so that I'm squinting and seeing what the pattern is doing to the whole thing. Now I'll come down through here and carry that on across here. Oops. Try not to move the plastic around. Let's see. Squint and look at that. If the dark went clear up into here, up to here, And uh, let's see, maybe a bit up there. OK, 
getting through here. Okay, then I have to kind of turn it so I don't see the reflection. I'll put my water underneath it there. That's a little less reflective. And now I can, I just plan some little pieces of light twigs that stick, sticking up through it. And that comes through here. Look at the whole pattern is weaving in and out. So I have to connect it up in my head, like connect the dots. And I want some darks down in here. Okay, that's looking better. It highlights this area by putting that dark in there. This gives me a pretty good idea of what it would look like if I did it in paint. All right. And over here, I'd like to take that right on across until it touches the other side. I don't want it to have a hard edge at the end. It would be easier to do this in the brush, but there. All right. Move this back there. Now that gives me a little idea. I think I'd rather have some of that dark down here. Gives me a better idea of what it would look like with that kind of a dark pattern. That was a good idea. I just wasn't sure what it would look like. All right, that's a, I could live with that. I think this tree needs to have a little more dark on the base of it. All right. Hmm. <clears throat> As I look up at that, I think maybe some of that dark coming back over here in the pattern that connects and heads down into here somewhere. Just so there's a continuous fluid motion. And this could stand to go over here to break the monotony of swooping down, a little break across. All right, that's much better. 
maybe even more down in here. Okay, that gives me an idea of how I want to do it. Now, what I do may not be exactly that, but that tells me where I'm going in a general pattern. Dum, bum, bum. Okay, now let's do it. <laughs> I'll set that over here so I can take a look at it. But I probably won't be copying that. In fact, I know I won't. Take a, now for a green that dark, I want to, I'll start with the sap green. Let's see, let me show you my palette. I'll start with the sap green. Got plenty of paint out here. So I've got a, quite a, a distance to cover. Then I'm going to add some thalo blue to bring it down even darker. Okay, then, then I'm going to add some transparent pyro orange to knock out the intensity of the blue-green and give me a, a green that's more neutral but is really dark. And now, let's see, look at my pattern. I know this was all... Dark through there. And I think that came all the way down. And we'll take this right on up here. Up to there. I'm not going to try and copy that same thing. I never I couldn't. And it would besides it would drive me nuts, but I'm gonna Take a look at this. And I want to carry this dark across here. We'll leave some pattern like foliage in there. We'll leave this as a lost edge here. I think that's important to leave some edges kind of lost so they're not fully explained. It allows the, uh, the viewer to participate by filling in the blanks and they're good at that. I don't want to deny them the opportunity I'll take that and run on over here into this. And we'll build that same kind of pattern moving across. Let's see, we wanted this to come up here and then trickle on across over into this. Like shadow underneath the foliage or there. And I think I'll put some uh, intermediate value right there.
somewhere between this and the dark. And likewise, I'm going to come in with a little color up here. There. Now let's go back to the dark pattern. I squint and do quite a bit of this part of the painting with my eyes almost half closed so that I don't see the little spot where I'm working. I see the bigger pattern. And then I'm going to have to take a smaller brush and do some little things up there, for instance. Like that. And look at that pattern. I want to really make sure this comes down and through here. I'm going to leave some line for some limbs sticking out there. And let's see, I think if we get rid of some of that, take this pattern up here, start to connect it with that, but it won't connect. And some in here. I was going to take that all the way over to the other side. Maybe this would be a good place to do it. Right down here is a fairly dark area. And we could end it down here with a don't want too much activity there. Start drawing attention to itself. And then I jump up there just to break it from yeah, you know, I'll take it across. Now a little bit more. down to here. Have that end in a little leafy pattern. Yeah. 
And we need a little of that, maybe not quite as dark, coming over into here. I feel like this is a little bit empty and I want to fill it slightly. A little more pattern coming through here. Slightly darker. And emphasizing a little of the horizontal. Now I'll look at it and in a mat, see how that is. That's much better. I like that. That is the final touch that that this zigzag here. It's certain not solid, but it's enough to get the movement going up to here and back across there. Could use possibly a little bit back here. There, I suggest some tree trunks coming up into that. Then you need somebody standing right there to give you a whack, make you stop. There, I like that. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing in the workshop. Uh, is building patterns like that of color and value and uh, you know working with aspens i think uh so they've got that autumn color that's so gorgeous a golden bright golden color against the darks and the greens and things this is these colors down here are what pop those out so all right thank you